praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. Amen. God's going to do great things, and we come with expectation that God is going to meet us here. We're not here just out of, out of ritual or out of tradition, but we know that God is going to do something. If we could all stand, we're just going to read a quick verse. And oftentimes when we go through things or, or we're through, going through a trial or we're going through a hard time, we often come to God and maybe subconsciously we don't mean to do it, but we beg him for what we need. We beg him for a miracle. We feel like we have to come to him and beg him for healing. But Isaiah 53 and 5, it says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Healing is not found in your begging. It's not found in your pleading, but your healing, your miracles, your deliverance, it's all found on the cross. your, Your healing was already bought on the cross. Your deliverance was already bought on the cross. So we don't have to come before Jesus. We don't have to come before the throne of God and say, God, Please, if you would just come down and meet me, you can come to him in faith because you know that he already did it on the cross. Amen. With that in mind, we're just, we just have a special request. Uh, we were asked to pray for uh, a lady. Her name is Mindy. She recently lost her 19-year-old son. Uh, so that family is going through a hard time. So we're going to take that request to the Lord right now knowing that God can do a work, knowing that whatever healing, whatever restoration needs to be done in that family, it was already done on the cross. So Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. And God, we ask that you reach down into the situation, Lord. We don't know all the details, but you know everything that's happening, Lord. You know all the healing that needs to take place. You know all the restoration that needs to take place. And we pray that you would do a work. And we have faith that you're going to use this for good. You say that you are working all things for good. And we believe it in faith. And Lord, we worship you because we know that you're going to do a work. We worship you because we know that something's going to happen and something's going to move in that situation. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. How many have faith that God's going to do a work, not only in that situation, but any situation we bring before him? And we're just going to worship him in Jesus' name. And take this offering that I bring. Proclaim your everything And my life's nothing without you Take my hand and lead me through And here I am I'm worshiping you With all we 
can 
it's just the way it is Cause you are God alone from before time I think that's something the worst about that he doesn't share his throne with another he doesn't share his throne with any other god but any request that we bring before god he hears it and he doesn't have to ask permission from anyone to perform a miracle to perform a healing he doesn't need permission when we go to him we go directly to the source amen you can be seated just for a few minutes god is so good I'm not trying to stop what he's doing here we just Got to go through our announcements in case anyone online is watching uh, and you want to know about what's going on this week. We have Saturday night prayer. That's at 7 p.m. We also have our Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. Uh, there's Sunday school in the morning and then Sunday night service at 6.30 p.m. Just our regular, regular week. And, but we believe God's still going to move tonight. We believe that God still has some stuff that he wants to deal with. We believe that he's going to speak to us through his word. And we're just going to pray that he blesses the rest of this service. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your peace, God. We ask that you bring forth your word in whichever way you feel best, God. We believe you're going to do a work tonight. We're so thankful for the opportunity to be here. In Jesus' name we pray. Than a 
He's so good. He's so good to us. Amen. He's a great God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Well, Brother Grant, uh, one of his last sermons says we gotta get out of the get out of the rut. We gotta do something different. So I'm uh, I'm gonna try to get out of my comfort zone here and try something different. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, um, we want to open up our Bibles to um, Genesis 34, 3, 37 and verse 24. And they took him, meaning Joseph, and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And then let's turn to Job 1 and 1. And 1. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job, and that, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and, sh and shewed evil. Then in verse chapter 3, verses 11, the same Job, why did I not from the boom, why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? It was kind of like, uh, he was wanting to give himself, he was wanting them. He was wanting to not live anymore. Amen. One more, one more fellow we just want to talk about is uh, Jeremiah. And uh, Jeremiah said in verse 20 and 9 says, Then I, he also said in verse 20 and 14 said, Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Jeremiah didn't want to live anymore either. And then 20 and 9 says, When I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But the word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. The title of this message, or maybe us, uh, Ryman, to pray first. Jesus, I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. Ryman said that, uh, we may be seated, Ryman said that uh, it's, not all of, it's not about us, it's about him. I like to title this message as, uh, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. We, we sing the song, uh, He's a Good, Good Father, and uh, that's, who, that's who he is. And we're loved by him, that's who we are. And he is all that. We are loved by him, he, he is a good father. But sometimes... Uh, Bad things happen to good people. You look at Job. Job was, uh, Job, uh, was a man uh, after God's heart. He, uh, God bragged about Job. You know, just look at my servant. He's, he's a good guy, and he ensues evil. He, he's a perfect man. But then um, we look at, uh, 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 what's his name? Jo not Joseph. Yeah, Joseph. He... Uh, he had great dreams. God gave him great dreams. He's going to be a big leader and all that stuff. And here he finds himself in a pit and uh, he's wondering what's going to happen to him. He's, he, he can't get out. He's, there's no water in there from the drink. He's, he's there going to die. Um, then we look at, a, at uh, Jeremiah there. He was a man of God. He, God used him to be a, a witness to Israel, to bring them back to God. And uh, he ended up saying... Uh, I wish I was dead too. You know, where, why, uh, why did my mother bear, born me? You know, uh, you would think these these guys are up there with God. God loves them. You know, and look at what happens to them. They're all wishing they were dead. Uh, a while back, when I we were starting to come to church, my wife and I, we already had the, we were married and we had one child already, and there was another one on the way. And then there was this fellow that came to church, Keith Steers. And um, Keith was a, a great guy. He, he was a little rough. He liked to fight and party and stuff like that. And, um, but he came to God, and, and he said to God, he said, if, God, if you are real, make yourself known you know, to me. And the next thing you know, he's, he's crying, he's praying at the altar, and, and, and God's changing his life. He went on and got baptized in Jesus' name, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And uh, Keith, was, Keith was a great guy. 
he, he, uh, him and I became very good friends, best of friends, really. And uh, he was the type of guy, he would give you the shirt off his back. He was just a great guy. And I remember one time uh, at work, uh, I, I got in a fight. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't, was I don't usually fight. <laughs> but uh, this felt, somebody, this one big guy, he, he put a bad picture in front of me. And I said, uh, I said, I don't care to look at that. You better take it down. <laughs> and this guy, he's 265 pounds, and I'm about 145 at the time. At Fords, you had to be 150 to get in to yeah, Fords. That's the only requirement they had. But um, I was working in, <laughs> I was working in a foundry. In the foundry, you, you sweat, and you have to change your coveralls three times a day because you sweat so much. So I was down to about 145. And I told this fellow, you better take this sign down, this picture down. I don't want to look at it. I said, you don't take that down. I'm going to take it down. <laughs> so uh, I ended up taking it down. And next thing I know, no, he, he, he said, you take that down. I'm going to bust your arm. So I ended up taking it down. And next thing I know, he's on top of me and ready to give it to me. <laughs> and uh, so um, we, were on a, we, we fell on a conveyor belt. And we were up two, two three stories up. And the conveyor belt was a bunch of scrap metal, and it goes down to a, a, a big, big pile of scrap metal down there. So if you fall down there, you're going you're, you're gonna to hurt. So I'm on the conveyor belt with him on top of me, and I can't get him up. And he's, he's there like this. And I said, oh, no, I'm already hurting. But <laughs> so, uh, so somebody ran over and shut the line off so that we don't fall over, and they broke up the fight. And uh, so, to make a long story short, I, at least I got rid of the picture. <laughs> so, so um, a couple of weeks later on, uh, we got laid off, and, and um, we had to go to the Ford garage to pick up our paycheck, our last paycheck. So, Keith, who was my friend, he, he gave me a ride there, and uh, we, we pulled up, and the guy uh, next to us getting out of his car, I said, Keith already knew that I got in this fight. I said, Keith, that's the guy there. And Keith, he had the Holy Ghost, but he still has some rough, rough, rough uh, manners of him. Eh? He says, you want me to take him out? <laughs> and Keith's a scrapper, but I'm, I wasn't too sure if he could take this guy. And I, I said, no, 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 Keith, I got to work with him. I don't want to, you know, I don't want any trouble. You know? So, but Keith would do that. He would take his shirt off. Yeah? He, would, uh, he, he would do anything. He'd, he'd risk his life. I think he would have risked his life for me that day, you know? So anyways, um, we got to know Keith pretty good, and he already lost, he, he, uh, he was living in Calming Law, and he wanted to make things right, so he, he got married to this lady. They already had uh, two children, but one of his children died. Uh, a, ba a, a baby girl died, they call it a crib death. So he was kind of trying to get over that. And, I, and what do you say to somebody like that? You say, you say um, Keith? Just around the corner, things are going to change. And uh, so Keith went on. He was doing pretty good. Excuse me. So, so just after Luella, uh, Keith, Keith's coming to church regularly and doing really good. He come to church one night, and uh, he, he's, he's having a good time. You know, God loves him, and he's, he's really happy. He goes home, and I get a phone call. He says, Doug, she cleaned me out. She took all this furniture. She had, uh, she had a U-Haul, took all this furniture, everything. There's nothing left in the house. And Keith had to sleep over our house that night. And, and she left him for another fellow. And I, what do you say? You know, I said, Keith, just around the corner, things are going to change. <laughs> and uh, just around the corner, Keith's at work. And uh, he's on a platform. Just before they put the metal, I put, they put the window into the, the metal. It's raw metal there. So he was working on this. And, he fell off the platform, and he went to grab to, to keep him from falling off, and he slid his hand. It, it, it was just hanging there. The blood was skirting up to the ceiling. So they got, got to stop blood, and got him to the hospital, and the doctor's operator tried to stitch everything back together, and, and uh, the doctor said, you'll never use this hand again. And uh, what do you say? Keith, just around the corner, things are going to change. But uh, I remember the contraption he had. He had like a, a strap here, and he had elastics on his finger. He said, Doug, I'm going to get it back. 
And he worked and worked and got his hand back, and he could use it again. So things started, you know, things were looking up for him. So uh, we had a bunch of newfies in our church, and uh, the newfies had an open house. You can come there any time, and if, uh, if they were eating, they just had a little bit more to the soup, and they were just great people. And Keith went there a lot, and he just, you know, talked and had tea and drank, you know, Kool-Aid. <laughs> so uh, one day, Keith's over there, and he's talking, and all of a sudden, Keith fall, passes out. The newfies, on, they call the ambulance, and, and he goes to the hospital, and uh, they check him out, and the doctor says, you only got two weeks to live. You have cancer. So, uh, what do you say? Oh, he's a great guy. But all this happened to him when, uh, when bad things happen to good people. And we all know stories. We just heard on the news, this, well, we just prayed this morning about a lady there lost his teenager son. And we know another couple that... Um, that uh, had, uh, she went to Bible school with Diane. They, they had a couple autistic kids, and uh, they kept, she had to work during the day, and the kids were, couldn't sleep at night. They'd have nightmares and all that. She'd be up all night and, and have to work in the next day. So when bad things happen to good people. But um, you might ask, why? Why is this all happening? And, and Job asked, where is God? Where are you, God? And Job 23 and 8 and 9 and 10 says, Behold, I go forward. Well, we heard that the other day. Behold, I go forward, but there he's not. He's not there. Backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand. I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Uh, Job, even Job's wife, she was confused too. She says, why don't you just curse God and die? And all his friends, they just, uh, he was in ashes and, and scraping the boils off his, his, himself and in ashes on his head. His friends just had poured more dirt on him. Oh, you sin, you're doing, you're condemned, you, you're, you did something wrong and all that stuff. You know? They're just making it worse for him. And Job says, where are you? You know, we might ask, is God going to... Is God going to answer my prayer? Is God mad at me? Why so much pain? Don't you care, God? Job said, uh, Behold, he findeth occasion against me. He counteth me for his enemy. Job was so confused that he thought God was... When we go through this stuff, you, you're wishing you're dead. You, you think God's left you. You, you can't, he doesn't hear your prayers. He doesn't and say, Why does all this hurt? Why does all this pain? Um... Jeremiah said, I quit. I'm not going to talk anymore about God. He's he's been through jail. He's been through prison. People tried to kill him, slap him. And and he said, I had enough. He was in a mire, mire in the clay. He couldn't get out. They were just in there to die. And an Ethiopian eunuch had to pull him out and saved his life. But he says, that's it. I'm done. But thank God for the word of God. He says, where is that verse now? He said, I'm, I'm quitting, but the word of God was in him. It couldn't stop him. It burned like fire in him. Thank God for the word of God. It, it keeps us. It keeps us going. It keeps us, it keeps us fighting. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, broken and suffering will make you either bitter or better. Um, we, have, we have a friend, he's Oliver Hibbs. He was a newfie. And he, uh, he loved God. And he went to Bible school with Diane and... and you know, a bunch of the Wanoofies went to Bible school at this time, and, and he was really doing good. He preached for us and everything, but he, went, he moved back to Newfoundland. That rock always calls you, I guess. <laughs> so he moved back there, and uh, he had some trouble with his father. He had, a, he had a boy and a girl, and they were, you know, in the teenagers now, and uh, his father molested his girl, his daughter, and uh, Oliver says, uh, and the devil, the devil's an accuser of the brethren, right? The devil comes around and said, if God loves you, he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't let that happen to you. He says, what, what kind of God is he? And, you know, the devil's accusing you all the time. You're not worthy of God. You're, uh, you're you know, God's left you. He doesn't love you anymore. But Ryman said, 
the other day. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Um, he's the potter and we're the clay. When we go through stuff like that, when you're hurting and it's painful, like Sister Sandra, when things aren't going the way you want them to go, and uh, you're hurting, you're confused, you don't know what's going on, and uh, but I know when the pain is there, and uh, you don't know what's going on, and you can't work anymore, you're paying so much. Um, what, where's God? Where is he? But we're on a potter's wheel. God's not done with us yet. It doesn't mean God is done. It means he's getting started. On, hold on. We, we read our sign in front. The sign says, plan, plan A. Follow Jesus no matter how hard it gets. There's no plan B. Hold on. He says, hold on. There's so much pain. The reason is why. Because God's ways are not our ways. You ask why. Why, why, why am I going through this? Why, why do I don't feel like living anymore? You know why? It's because he loves us. His ways are not our ways. You say, oh, I don't want to live anymore. This is, this is crazy. This is too much for me. But it's because God loves you. It's, it's, his ways are not our ways. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. Did I give you that one? Maybe not. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, his son, in whom he delighteth. Hebrews 12 and 11 says, If you endure chastising, God dealeth with you as a son and daughters. For what son is he whom the father chases not? For barely, for they barely chasten us after their own pleasure. But for, but he, God, for our own, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Like Mike preached on the other day. On the side, I hope I'm not taking too long here. On the side note, um, I still believe in uh, uh, this new philosophy they got out now with a time out. And uh, I'm going to take your skittles away from you. And <laughs> I don't know about that, you know. Um, one time, uh, I was down to, uh, to uh, I don't want to talk about myself, but just to make, uh, it's about him, it's not about me. Just to make an uh, uh, illustration here, my, I was down to my son, his wife's in a hospital, and, and he didn't know too many, he just moved there, and he didn't know too many people, so he asked me to come down and kind of babysit. So one time, uh, he said, well, I got to go to the store, we, we all hop in the car, he said, I got to get a few, few things, like milk and all that. So his daughter and him went to the store, and, and my grandson said, I'm going to stay here. And I kind of said, okay, I'll stay with him. So as soon as his dad's gone, he starts hitting me. I said, uh, you better stop hitting me, uh, Levi, or I'm going to hit you back. I, I, I thought of maybe taking his skittles away, but I didn't think that would work. So um, he, he kept hitting me. Eh? So uh, I said, yeah, don't you know, you hit me one more time, I'm going to hit you back. He hit me. <laughs> so I give him a Charlie horse. Anybody know what a Charlie horse is? Yeah. I give him a good shot on the leg. Area. And he started tearing up. He said, you're mean. You're just mean. I said, I'm mean. You're mean. You're the one that's hitting on me and all that stuff. So uh, he got over it. A, while, a couple of days later on, he said, Dad, Grampy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was so mean to you and all that. You know, he learned his lesson. You know? uh, I, I, I was telling my son-in-law about this and he said his dad worked in a jail. And uh, in the jail there, uh, this one fellow kept breaking everything, destroying everything. He, just, he was just like to destroy things. And my, uh, my son-in-law's dad would have to go in there and repair toilets and everything that he busted up. So the warden, warden came up to the, the guards and said, you know, I'm tired of this guy breaking everything up and all that stuff. Um, I want you to stop this. I want you to stop this from happening anymore. <laughs> so that night, the two guards went in his cell and beat, beat the tar out of him. And he said, uh, if you want that again, you, uh, if you break something again, you're going to get the same thing. Well, you know what happened? He never did it again. 
He learned his lesson. So I don't know about this new stuff, but the Bible says, spare the wild and spoil the child, right? So that's on a side note. Yeah. Okay, God brings us into a storm to develop you, not to harm you. We go, why is all this happening? God, why is this going on? Sometimes you can pray about something, but sometimes only, only comes through a brokenness and a suffering. Jesus had a wilderness experience. He, had, he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil, the devil tempted him. And he had to go through before he started his ministry. Um, Jesus was given a, a boy's lunch. He would feed one person his lunch. But after Jesus broke it, it fed 5,000. Jesus knows, you know, he knows everything. He knows us. Uh, he sent his disciples into a storm. He, after he fed the 5,000, he sent them into a storm. He, he knew there was going to be a storm. He knew they were, you know, they were going to be afraid, and they were, they were fearing for their lives. But after that, after the storm, Peter come out, and he was the one who had the revelation of Jesus, who he was. You know? so, but I can't go on. Jesus knows you're better than you. Know, so. A lot of times, when, I had one time where I was in a dark valley, and I told God, I can't go on anymore. This is, you got to do something, God. I can't go on. But it didn't stop. <laughs> um, it kept on. But Jesus, Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. In, in Jeremiah 1 and 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou cometh forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I have already given you the capacity to endure God knew Jeremiah could go through it. He knew he could take it. I, uh, we were, Diane told me about this, uh, this like, quote from a lady. I asked God to help me to grow, and then it started to rain. You know, God's ways are not our ways. Uh, you can't get mad at God. Job had a, a reason to get mad, but he couldn't, he couldn't get mad. Only God can bring you out. He, he, you know, you say, God, oh, you're so mean, but you say, oh, God, forgive me for that. Because only God can give you, get you out of that. He wants you to depend totally on him. There is, has, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, there has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of his, to escape that he may be able to bear it. You know, you might say, oh, I can't go on, I can't go on anymore, I'll do something. But you don't know yourself. God knows. God knows what's best. The hand of God is upon all them, Ezra says, the hand of God is upon all them for good. He will not forsake you. He won't, he won't leave you. When you don't know what, to do, what else to do, Jesus, hold, Jesus, hold on. No, Jesus, you don't know what to do. Hold on. It's not over. You may feel alone, but you are not alone. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will be with you. Amen. There was, after Jesus, well, before that, before, uh, before uh, Jesus, you get to know Jesus as a healer, you have to be sick. You have to be broken. You have to be down there. When you don't know what to do, else to do, just hold on. You may feel alone, but you're not alone. There was two, uh, two disciples of Jesus walking on the road to uh, Emmaus. And they were, they were depressed. They were despondent. Their hopes were gone. They, they, they figured Jesus was their Messiah. Jesus was going to change things for them. And Jesus was going to make everything right. And now they hung him on a tree. And the uh, two disciples were despondent, they're depressed, and they're, they're walking to the demands, and they're thinking about these things. Oh, what's going to happen? What are we going to do now? And then uh, somebody walked beside them. And uh, through their despondency and through their depression, Jesus was walking beside them. And he made himself known after, after them. He said, didn't our hearts burn? He was al he's always there. He'll never leave us or forsake us. You might say, oh, he's gone. He's gone. He's, I'm a, I'm a, Job even thought, he's, I'm, I'm his enemy. God wanted to, where was that when I, well, anyway, Joe, 
Job, and one of the verses said, you know, he's, he's out to destroy me. He's, uh, he's, you know, I'm his enemy. He, he, he was so confused. He didn't think God was with him. But Job also said, he, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He, in his confusion, in his doubt, in his pain, he trusted him. If we can hold on through the pain and fear and doubt, you are going to come out with more, more power, more compassion, more blessing than you ever imagined. I remember a fellow at work, I, I hope I'm not taking too long here, but a, a fellow at work, um, I forgot something in my locker, and I went to get my locker, and I, I heard somebody crying. And this is just after I'd gone through a, a dark spiral, and, I, and God brought me out of it. And he's crying, and I, I go, look, and it's my friend Dean, Dean Hurst. He's a karate guy. He's, a, he's just a good guy. He'll give you a shit off his back, too. He would. And uh, he's crying. I said, Dean, what's wrong? And he said, oh, you wouldn't understand. I said, yeah, well, you know, I've been through some things a couple of times. And, uh, what's wrong? He says, I'm never happy. He was uh, depressed all the time. And yet he had a, he, he, could, he taught karate. He's retiring from Fords. Everything looked good for him. But he said, I'm not happy. And um, I said, I, I know how you feel. Huh? Jesus can take, take that away from you. And all that. Said, oh, no, I don't. Jesus is not for me. And he ended up hanging himself. He was, you know, he, the pain was so much for him. But, but uh, Jesus is the answer. Yeah. Amen. So it gave me compassion for him anyways. You know. It'll give you power. It'll give you a blessing. You, you can imagine. Joseph, just, we're about to end it right here. Joseph began second in command. He was a savior of Israel. But he had to go through some, some jail. He had to go through some uh, pits and all that. Because God was not done with him. We talked about the right hand and the left hand. The left hand was still working on him. They had to, you know, Joseph might have said, oh, I'm, I'm pretty good. I got these names. I'm going to be a leader and all this stuff. But God had to work on him to break him down and, uh, and bring him through a, a breakdown part. Yet when he, in, Gen, in Gen, Genesis 37 and 51, uh, when, he was in, when he was second in command, uh, he had a son named Manasseh. Manasseh. How you said Manasseh? Uh, for, for Manasseh meant, for God, shall hath, for God hath made me to forget all my trials, all my toils, in all my father's house. Satan, we, 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 uh, Trevor's dad wrote a book, Satan meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Amen. He steers last words. They can take everything away from me, but they can't take what's in my heart. He says uh, he died in the, within the Holy Ghost. He died with the Holy Ghost. Amen. For, for 37 chapters, uh, Job was in turmoil. His, his wife was confused. He said, why don't you just curse God and die? Uh, his friends just said, there, you, there's something wrong with you. you you're, you're sinned. You're, you're no good. You're, you know, get right with God. <laughs> but at the end, and the Lord turned the, capacity, the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before, a double portion. Amen. But first, he must forgive his friends. That was, uh, even Jesus said, before his resurrection, he said, forgive them, but they know not what they do. We have to forgive. We have to, give, we have to forgive those that people that hurt you. If they don't, you, don't they, you can't take that with you. You're not, you won't get any farther. But after he prayed for his friends, God gave him a double portion. I'm just, just about ending here. But be, behold, 1 Peter 4 and 2, 12. Behold, things are not strange. Not, behold, think it not strange concerning the fiery darts which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in so much as a, ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, he may be glad also with exceedingly joy. I couldn't see the... Okay, one time was, I went through this dark thing for about three weeks. I, I was sick. And um, I didn't see any end to it. I said, I'm going to... This will be the rest of my life. It's like in a dark tunnel, like a cloud over my head. But uh, one day I, I looked out the window from my house and I saw a dead squirrel there. I said, well, at least I'm better off than that guy. <laughs> So it's kind of saying in my own way, thank you, Lord, for, you know. Anyways, you know, 
I'm kind of rejoicing in my own way, but it wasn't a very good rejoice, but still. Um, I, I bought a book from Victor Jackson, and I'm quoting his, his uh, I'm making a quote from him. The pain revealed who we are. The pain pulls us out the treasures within us. You are more powerful than you think you are. Everything is working in your favor. Keep being faithful. Don't give up. Stay on the porter's, potter's wheel. Endure the brightness because your, day, your best days are ahead. Pain is the price tag of, of revelation. Amen. For, for which cause we faint not, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a more exceedingly and eternally weight of glory. Amen. In, in, in conclusion here, what inspired this, uh, this uh, talk, at first I was thinking, well, maybe I'll talk about the church. It's the, best, the safest place in the world. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. But I didn't think anything else after that. And I said, okay, I'll talk about uh, being united, you know, being together, united together. That's where God's blessing is, it says. But then I, you know, I'm praying, I say, oh, God, give me something to speak, you know. <laughs> and I, I looked up out the window at the time, and I saw we have this garden in the backyard with a, it's a milkweed garden. And uh, it's mostly uh, that's where uh, monarch butterflies like to lay their eggs and the, the caterpillars eat that. Uh, and that's what they live on. So I saw this butterfly, and she was just fluttering around, just like if she's dancing around. I said, wow, look at that. You know? And then all of a sudden, this other butterfly comes, and they're twirling around. You know how butterflies do. And, and I said, that's great. And that inspired me. Because huh? when, a, when a caterpillar enters a cocoon, uh, the enzymes in his body break him down to a, a liquid. If you open it up, when he just started going to the cocoon, and you open that up, you're just going to have water come out. Um, it reduces the body down to liquid. All that is left in the cocoon is a small piece of the caterpillar. In that cocoon, it breaks, the body breaks down to a liquid. Over time, the caterpillar becomes to build itself back up into a beautiful butterfly. And even then, when it starts to uh, break out of the cocoon, uh, it struggles. It has struggles getting out. But if you... Uh, Tried to open that cocoon and let him out. He'd just fall down and he wouldn't be able to fly. But he had to go through that struggle. Had to go through that breakdown and all that. There is a transformation that is coming out of your brokenness. Before God uses you mightily, there is a broken season. Amen. Amen. So when you feel this, this painful, there's no, there's no hope. There's no worth going on. It's because God loves you. You're His chosen people. You're His chosen. Per, you know, you're you're part of His bride. He's, He's not going to leave you. He's going to be with us to the end. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise, praise your wonderful name, Lord. Amen. Can we all stand? Amen. Isn't God good? You know, it's one thing for, it's one thing for me to get up here and preach on the left hand of God. and You know, I'm 24, haven't gone through a whole lot. But it's another, it's another thing when someone like Brother Moss is probably been through a lot, comes up and preaches about it. You know, it's, it's different. It's different. Thank you for that word, Brother Moss. That was amazing. Amen. God works through brokenness. If you want to be used of God, if you want to see the blessings of God, you don't get blessed until you're broken. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your greatness. We're so thankful for what you've told us tonight, God. We just want to God, we don't want to lose faith when the going gets tough. Lord, help us to stick with it. We're so thankful for what you do and the blessings and the brokenness. God, help us to endure both times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is so good. You're dismissed. Greet one another. In Jesus' name.